Let's talk about some riffs. Last year, I did a series of videos which I called 10 Rhythms in 10 Days. I took requests for specific rhythms my followers wanted analyzed, and it went over really well. I thought it'd be fun to do something in the same vein this year, so get ready for the beginning of 10 Riffs in 10 Days. I put out the question a few months ago on what riffs I should cover in this series, and there were some really great suggestions. Most of these were suggested to me on the Prague School Discord channel. The link is in the description, so come and join me there. These videos do take a ton of work, especially to do 10 in 10 days. If you enjoy this type of video, please consider subscribing. It really does help me out. And if you like the way I teach, I do have some openings at the moment for some private lessons. All of my contact info is in this video's description. Now let's get to some riffs. Tesseract just dropped a new single, War of Being, and it's my favorite song from them in quite a while. It blends the heaviness of one with some of their later sound as well, and it's a really nice balance of their overall style. And this opening riff is awesome. Like a lot of Tesseract riffs, the rhythm is the most interesting part of this, and as is the case with a lot of gent riffs, this is completely in 4-4. Listen to the snare throughout this whole riff. It's always playing on beats 2 and 4, creating that straight 4-4 backbeat. This entire riff lasts for 15 bars, all of them being in 4-4 except for the last measure. But where this starts to get tricky is there are these odd patterns working against that 4-4, and there are a couple of levels to these, some larger overall patterns that can then be broken down into smaller chunks of rhythm. The first larger pattern to look at here lasts for five full bars of 4-4 with an additional seven eighth notes in the sixth bar. This makes this pattern a total of 47 eighth notes before it starts repeating again. And I'll explain more of how this actually makes this sound in a minute, but for now let's take this long pattern and break it into smaller chunks. By the way, the tuning of this song is G-sharp, E-A-D, E-A-D on a seven string. Definitely an unusual tuning, but that's par for the course with Tesseract. I actually don't have my high three strings tuned E-A-D, as I'm just using the low strings on this riff, but that's the tuning. The majority of this riff is alternating between these low bends at the first fret of the E string on the note F, and these faster pick 16th note triplets. The bends happen four times at the beginning for a total of 12 eighth notes. It's a quarter note, and then a half note with an eighth note rest, then a quarter note, and then a dotted quarter note. So two, five, two, three. And how I'm feeling this is the first two bends landing on the beat and the last two on off beats. There is a slight variation to the rhythm of this later in the riff, but I'll cover that when it gets there. There are two variations of the pick 16th note triplets. The first is just four notes, each one picked three times to equal a group of 16th note triplets with an eighth note rest on the end. And this longer variation, which has 10 notes. Harmonically, this is all coming from E flat harmonic minor. This longer run, for example, has every single note from the scale. The riff also resolves to E flat at the end for the next section of the song. And the only note that doesn't come from this scale in the entire riff is this E, open E string that happens in these chugs. But really that's more for the effect of the heaviness. 
What's cool about this is that it's more rooted on that note F during the riff. That's the low note it keeps going back to. And F is the second note in E flat harmonic minor. So this riff sounds more like the second mode of harmonic minor, which is Locrian natural six. And I'm not sure the guys in Tesseract know or care about this nerdy theory stuff, but it's one of the things that makes this riff sound so interesting. Now that we've looked at the smaller chunks of rhythm, let's piece these together into the larger pattern. It goes bends, first short 16th note triplet variation, bends with the last bend an eighth note shorter, making it a total of 11 eighth notes instead of 12, longer variation of the triplets, and then to finish it off, there are two bends, a quarter note and a dotted quarter note, followed by two open string chugs that are each a quarter note long. I mentioned this whole pattern is 47 eighth notes long, so let's do some math. The first bends are 12 eighth notes long. The shorter triplet pattern is five eighth notes long. Bends with one eighth note subtracted is 11 eighth notes. The longer triplet pattern is 10 eighth notes. And these last bends and chugs are nine eighth notes. So you have 12 plus five plus 11 plus 10 plus nine equals 47. Now this whole pattern repeats again, but this time it starts on the end of four, the last eighth note of bar six, instead of starting on the downbeat. So the entire riff is shifted forward in eighth note, and that makes this riff sound completely different against that snare backbeat, which never changes. And because we're feeling that pulse and the backbeat as the groove, the riff now interacts with the groove completely differently the second time. And that's the power of gent or mashuga style riffing, odd patterns against a steady backbeat groove. But this isn't quite over yet. The second of these longer patterns gets cut in eighth note short with these nasty harmonics at the sixth fret. And you have these low fast chugs on the open G sharp. So it goes harmonic, low F bend, two sets of chugs, harmonics, two sets of chugs, harmonics, two low F bends, and then a final bend that resolves to E flat. This extra heavy ending to the riff works well as a transition into the next part of the song where things come down in dynamics. That push and pull between loud and quiet and heavy and soft is really effective here. There are some similar rhythmic ideas happening in the end of this riff as happened earlier. These fast chugs, for example, start on the end of one the first time and then on the downbeat the second time, once again shifting this pattern around the beat. The last measure of this entire riff is in 7-8, basically just cutting off the last eighth note of 4-4. Four, four. And I think there's this idea that Tesseract or other bands in this style are always playing in 4-4. And it's true in a lot of cases, but it's not always the case. In fact, later in this song, there's an entire section in 13-8.
So there is the intro riff for War of Being by Tesseract. This is surprisingly tricky from a rhythmic perspective, and obviously I went into a lot of depth on the rhythms, but honestly from a playing perspective, I was more focused on the small chunks of the riff and making sure to start them in the right place. For me, it was all about figuring out which patterns were starting on the beat and which ones were starting on off beats. And once I had that, the riff flowed pretty easily. The music theory analysis of this stuff and the actual act of playing it can vary quite a bit. I'm not really thinking about theory when I'm playing. I might do some counting, but as I get more comfortable with the riff, I'm really just feeling it out. But for me, the analysis is really helpful when I'm composing. Having that knowledge of how these riffs are put together makes it really easy for me to write something in this vein if I want to. I'd like to know what you all think about the new Tesseract single. I'm a big fan and I can't wait to check out the full album. I'll be back tomorrow for day two of 10 riffs in 10 days. Till then. Stay proggy.